If you're on the list, I will call your name, and then after that, we'll hear from people who aren't on the list. Welcome. Good day, uh, supervisors. Um, I, I've sent all of you an email regarding a resolution to sort of mitigate the weather modification programs they've been doing here in the county. And uh, I wanted to, there were several things I wanted to talk about. The main thing was, is that there's no public oversight. Uh, private corporations can modify our weather without any public oversight or consent. There's no environmental impacts reports from what they're doing. And one of the reasons they say they're doing it is to slow global warming. So they will put these particulates up in the air, for instance, sulfur or aluminum, to reflect the sun back out in the space. Um, however, it is trapping certain pollutants inside our atmosphere. And so this is one of the things I'm concerned with. Um, the official scientific geoengineering scientists are proposing to dump or spray or put 10 to 20 million tons of these particulates in our air a year. Uh, the plant, the, their plans have actually been going on. I've documented it for the last three years. There's a friend I met who was documenting it for the last eight years. And so I presented you with this resolution, which was drafted by Rosalind Peterson, Dr. Rosalind Peterson. She has the agriculturedefensecoalition.org website, and she is imminent in that it's going to have an effect on our agriculture and our economy. So we need to have some sort of geoengineering or weather modification governance regarding these plans. And so uh, at one, I sent you all a link to the Board of Supervisors meeting regarding this. They had an entire plan. Uh, entire meeting uh, dedicated to the weather modification programs going on in Shasta County and they found high levels of the, the chemicals and toxins that are in the geoengineering patents in the uh, groundwater, the soil, and in the hair samples of uh, people that uh, thought they were being affected by it. And so what I would request to you is we have a specific meeting re regarding this geoengineering weather mo modification programs that are going on. And um, yeah. since this is your first time here, you may not be aware that we have a three-minute time okay. limit, but I'll give you just a, just a couple seconds to wrap up. Okay, so yeah, thanks again for your, for your help and any uh, support would be gratefully appreciated. And, once again, a request to do a specific meeting regarding the geoengineering programs here in the county. Thank you. Thank you. That the same aircraft can release experimental chemical additives in the air as chemical contrails or chemtrails. In this way, government agencies can either manipulate the weather or counteract global warming. But some people claim chemtrails are harming an unsuspecting public. Eyewitnesses and researchers who believe in chemtrails say that jet contrails don't vanish within minutes as they once did. They now linger and spread, sometimes for hours, forming strange, suspicious patterns. Rosalind Peterson is one of those believers. It's not normal for us. It's a grand experiment. Peterson lives in Northern California near San Francisco. At one time, she worked for the State Department of Agriculture. Part of her job involved being aware of environmental issues. I first started noticing unusual contrails in 2002 when it was brought to my attention by a friend of mine. He took me outside of his office and we began to look at these persistent jet contrails. Peterson thought she saw a connection between aircraft activity and reports of chemically contaminated water in communities throughout California. There were unusual high spikes in chemicals and heavy metals. 
Yeah, I'm right. Barium, aluminum, manganese, magnesium, zinc. And I suspect that we're getting the pollution from something in the atmosphere that's being released. Peterson became so alarmed about the chemical contrails that she formed an organization called California Skywatch, a group dedicated to clean air. I started documenting what I was seeing. I took pictures on my breaks. I took pictures at lunch hour. I started to really get angry because our once deep blue skies were no longer deep blue. They would turn into a white haze and they would turn into these man-made clouds uh, blocking the sunlight. Peterson discovered that she wasn't alone in her concerns. Hundreds of websites revealed that persistent airplane contrails had become a worldwide problem. I started then to research internet sites and government agencies, the EPA, NOAA, NASA, the United States Air Force. I learned that there was a lot of atmospheric heating and testing programs going on. I learned that there was lots of equipment that would lead these type of persistent plumes and, and spray chemicals. Will Thomas is an investigative journalist who believes that some contrails are part of secret atmospheric experiments. He's been writing about them for over 10 years. This is a deliberate project to slow down global warming. These trails were appearing over rural areas, away from navigational beacons and normal air routes. They would appear for weeks at a time and then disappear entirely, only to reappear months later, unlike normal scheduled air traffic. Thomas believes chemical contrails are an indication that someone is using jet emissions to engineer the weather and slow climate change. The problem with chemtrails is that when we attempt to geoengineer and interfere with complex interrelated atmospheric processes, we are in for unintended consequences on a major scale. Geoengineering is the artificial manipulation of Earth's environment on a large scale. In the early 1990s, American nuclear physicist Edward Teller was among the first scientists to model an experiment that would address the issue of global warming. He speculated that aluminum oxide could be injected into the upper atmosphere. It would act like tiny mirrors and deflect a portion of the sun's rays back into space. Supposedly, it was never put into practice. But activists believe the government has revived Teller's theory with some dire health consequences. Every day. Some of the literal fallout from this chemtrail project are these 10 micron particulates falling by the megaton on unsuspecting people, plants, and wildlife. Now, a human hair is 100 microns across. 10 microns is submicroscopic. It can impact our lungs. It can inflame our hearts, give us heart disease, leading to fatalities. So this material comes down randomly in invisible clumps. Dave Dickey also believes in chemtrails. As a landscape contractor for a large city, he spends a lot of time out of doors. Contrail development is different than it ever has been in the past. And I do remember one in January for about 2002, where the number of flights overhead were extremely unusual. The number of contrails in the sky was unbelievable. Um, we're counting 40 to 60 flights. And called solar radiation out of those 40 to 60 flights, uh, most of them left an incredibly persistent large plume which uh, which would spread out and, and cover the sky. As a landscaper, Dickey has to be familiar with the types of trace chemicals usually found in the environment. He regularly takes water and soil samples and has them tested. There was some research done that claimed that aluminum oxide could be used um, to uh, reduce global warming. Cool. And I thought that if there was any chance that aluminum oxide would be used in the atmosphere, that it would show up in precipitation. He collected rain samples on days when he noticed heavier than usual air traffic and took them to a lab. And I expected to see baseline measurements where aluminum would show up in precipitation at about uh, 0.0093 milligrams per liter very small amount of aluminum naturally present in precipitation. It was uh, 20 times higher approximately than what was expected to, to find. Dave Dickey believes that what he captured was the fallout from chemically laden contrails. I was really hoping that we find natural water samples. And when I 
they did find aluminum and barium, it's just another one of the indicating factors that something was unusual. Theoretically, scientists can cool the Earth using chemical compounds placed in the upper atmosphere. But could other substances be put there for more ominous purposes? Damn right. Military victory or defeat can depend on the weather. A commander who can control the weather has a weapon as powerful as any Air Force. During the Vietnam War, the U.S. military began seeding clouds along the Ho Chi Minh Trail to create floods and wash out North Vietnamese supply routes. It was known as Operation Popeye, and crews flew over 2,000 spray missions. I was told initially by a friend he said his brother was in the military service he said when there is these heavy spray days heavy days when there's lots of persistent contrails to keep his family inside when they were outside exposed to have them go in and take showers and he couldn't talk about it he couldn't explain